Michael Gielda from Amp Micro is uh, going to talk about the Axiom camera and how RISC-V is used. So take it away, Michael. Hi, everyone. All right, so I'll be talking today about the Axiom camera and how RISC-V is used there. Uh, someone just asked me if RISC-V is like running the entire camera. Well, I wish, but hopefully in the future. Uh, so to start off with who we are, uh, just a second. Basically, we're an uh, consultancy firm uh, doing a lot of R&D and we specifically work a lot with open source and that's how we're here. One of the proud sponsors of RISC-V, I uh, advise everyone to become one. Um, so what about the Axiom camera? It's, it's an actual big filmmaking camera with a 4K resolution meant to revolutionize the film industry. And uh, this here, of course, is just a 3D uh, sketch of what the camera will look like. But the actual project's on the way. We're actually building this. Uh, and um, it's not only about building a camera, but actually about building a modular platform that's going to be configurable, that's going to be uh, modular, and that's going to give full control over what uh, you can do with your film into the hands of the makers, into the hands of uh, the film community, film enthusiasts that would like to have more control over how the process of filmmaking is uh, being done. Currently, uh, if you buy a camera from a proprietary vendor, you get what you get, and you have a few controls, you can manipulate some things, but if you want to get the raw data out of the camera and manipulate it yourself, it's very hard to do that. Typically, the cameras already output some kind of a modified form of the, the actual video that you have taken, captured. So, uh, having a camera that allows you to fully control what you, what's going on, uh, gives people more control. And this is not something that is uh, just a hypothesis coming from us engineers. It's an actual request from filmmakers who are part of the apparatus community that's driving the project who say, we need that, we need this kind of thing. And Axiom Gamma that I'm talking about now, so uh, this big camera, uh, this is a Horizon 2020 project from the EU, uh, but the, the Axiom project itself goes far, far beyond one EU project. Uh, the partners in this project are uh, focused on specific aspects of the camera. So we have a, a German company called Dance doing all the mechanics and the optics of the camera. Really cool stuff. I wouldn't know how to touch that. Uh, there's IF Inventions who are uh, responsible for the hardware part, so the PCB design, also very complex, a lot of uh, complex electronics inside. And we, as Ant Micro, are responsible for the software, so including the FPGA stuff, uh, as well as the operating system things, drivers, uh, control scripts, and everything. Uh, added on top of that is Apertus, I've been talking about them already. They're the community driving the project, as well as uh, a university uh, of applied arts from Vienna, who are in charge of the dissemination and uh, uh, knowledge control in the project and also marketing. Uh, that's actually a very important role as well, uh, often underestimated, but we're happy to have them on board. So three companies doing each of them a technical part of the project, then uh, one organization that is the driving force, the, the customer, you would say, and one university that's kind of overseeing this from this uh, uh, administrative uh, perspective and so on. Uh, so the aims of Axiom as the project is actually to create a kind of an extendable platform that is a product in itself. It's a cool product, it's a great camera that people will want to use, but it's not supposed to end there, it's supposed to be a platform. Uh, the community aspect of the camera is very important, and uh, it's meant to open up a closed industry. It's meant to eliminate barriers for people to enter the market. So if you want to build your own camera or a module for the camera, you're free to do so. Okay, so once we publish everything, and, and this is going to be fully open source, you have to understand. So once we publish all the designs for the camera, and they're par partly up there already, but I mean, uh, it'll be reproducible once it's done. Uh, you actually will be able to take it, produce it yourself, perhaps extend it, uh, build a module for it without asking anyone for permission. 
And uh, coincidentally, this is kind of similar to, to aims of the Risk Five project. So uh, we're talking two different kinds of industries and areas, but actually the aims are almost the same. So breaking down barriers, uh, opening up a, a closed down industry, namely semiconductors, um, building a community. I can see today we, we have a community of people, not only consumers, not only people who come here and uh, look at how Risk Five is cool and uh, people who just want to take something from the community, but also a lot of people who contribute back and uh, expand, develop the project as we go. Uh, so I think it's, uh, those two projects are kind of well fitted uh, with respect to, to their aims. Uh, when I'm talking ecosystem, it really is important in Axiom. So we have, uh, it has somewhat of an European and USA bent, I would say, so Western world. But of course, this is not the aim. The aim is to be, be global. Uh, we're expecting that the community will grow significantly once the actual gamma camera is out. Uh, but still, it's quite impressive that we have a couple of hundred people already talking, already contributing, and, and uh, exchanging ideas how to make the camera better. And I think that aspect is also very good in Risk Five. Um, now, going to specifics, uh, the Axiom Gamma is a camera, but each camera actually is a set of you know, blocks. And uh, I won't go through all the building blocks because this is just a short 15 minute presentation, but uh, the most important blocks you should be looking at are the two on the top left. One of them is the so-called uh, pre-processing board, and that's based on the Kintex 7 FPGA. Uh, the reason we chose Kintex 7 is not out of some kind of uh, weird decision, it's actually the biggest single FPGA which you can have a, a free license to, to use the Xilinx tools for. So the, the, the openness aspect also means that even though we have to use proprietary tools in order to, to work with Xilinx FPGAs, we choose the one that is actually available for people to, to, to download the tools for and work without having to become a Xilinx partner. And also there's uh, another module that's important here. It's a zinc based uh, module uh, for processing. So first we have the pre-processing of the data from the sensor, and that's a lot of FPGA logic doing uh, complex, uh, well, not, not so very complex, but numerous uh, 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 stages of, of the pipeline. And then this data is fed through the zinc uh, outside. And by outside, there can be many things. There's also additional modules possible for all sorts of processing. There's a Tegra module for an Android-based GUI. But I'll be focusing on the FPGA part. And that is because, um, and that's how the modularity aspect that is reflected in this, this picture, we have this backplane and modules, uh, that's how it's reflected in reality. So it's still also uh, just a 3D model, but uh, this is going to look some, somewhat along these lines. So the current platform, actually, we have, we're prototyping on a, on a platform that's not yet the, the actual physical camera, uh, but it's those two boards, those two modules I've been talking about, these are the two, bo two boards connected together here. So the one closer to us is this uh, uh, Kintex 7 FPGA, and inside this we have the Z-Scale. How did we use RISC-V in Axiom? Now, this is not like some rocket science, this is not an extensive scenario of really complex RISC-V usage. Uh, but it's meant as uh, step one to, to kind of introduce Risk Five into uh, uh, the camera. We chose Z Scale because it's a kind of readily available implementation. Uh, we're so we're using what Yonsap uh, uh, worked with. Uh, actually, uh, we're using the Verilog implementation now because the Chisel one doesn't fully work. Yeah, but uh, um, the Z Scale uh, acts as a soft core for communicating between the two uh, modules I've been talking about. So we have an I2C uh, um, uh, interface, and we can. Uh, first, we configure the uh, FPGA from Zinc, yeah? and then when it's configured, there's a Z-Scale inside, we can use the Z-Scale to communicate between the Zinc module and, and the Kintex 7 FPGA, turning on and off different stages of the pipeline and manipulating parameters in order to get different kinds of uh, video output. So why didn't we use some other soft core? Well, my answer is, why should we? <laughs> if anyone is free to choose uh, what they're going to use in their design today, if they're not t bound by any kind of proprietary uh, uh, limits, then I, I say everyone should try a new Z-Scale 
uh, because it's open, it's out there, you don't have to pay any royalties, and uh, also the important thing is it's portable. So even though we're using Xilinx FPGAs today, and that will probably stay for at least the foreseeable future, uh, you don't want to specifically lock yourself into some kind of a vendor just because. It's, it's better to use something that's portable uh, since that gives you a higher chance that in the future, in case something goes in a weird direction, you'll be able to take your risk five and go anywhere. Um, also, the extensibility and the customizability aspect is very important. So when you're talking risk five, it's a whole ecosystem. So even though we're using a specific implementation Zscale, of course, you can see that in case you decide, okay, Zscale is not the best, I, I'd rather use low risk then you can do that quite easily and you have a wide array of choices what, what you can do. Uh, also, uh, there's an opportunity to contribute. So we'll, we actually want to contribute and want to give a feedback how, how it works. Uh, so why not? And this is also pretty well aligned with our dual licensing scheme. So you have to remember this will be fully open source. So we're going to do GPL and BSD style uh, and having a core that's also, BSD licensed gives us an opportunity to just um, basically uh, put it in our design and not worry about licensing at all. Our long-term goals are actually more interesting. Uh, so if you're thinking a camera, if you're thinking video systems in general, you have to understand that Ant Micro being a kind of industrial company, uh, we are doing the camera as an interesting project, but we're looking in the broader perspective of video platform. So it's, it's a filmmaking camera, but the design will also be reusable in an industrial context for medical imaging, for all sorts of quality control, uh, you name it. There's a lot of applications for 4K filming. And uh, if you think about video pipelines, they are huge and they have lots of parameters. And I think they're a nice field to experiment with uh, things like Risk V. Uh, so putting Risk Five inside the camera is like step one to, to actually see how it can be used in the broader video uh, aspect. Also, uh, looking at the Chisel methodology, it's uh, quite interesting to, to try to push it into other projects and broaden uh, its adoption. Uh, we think, uh, being a software company, you have to remember we are actually a software company that expanded into FGA over the course of our existence. Uh, so being software guys, we kind of like the, this kind of more or software friendly approach of, of Chisel. Uh, so it's interesting for us to, to, to work with it and have other people also work with it due to the fact that they're working with us in the project. Uh, there's also, I think, a very important aspect that's marketing. Uh, so basically, we're geeks here and we all know what Risk V is and we like semiconductors and stuff like that, but uh, unfortunately, not everyone in the world understands this passion. And uh, if you can say, you know, Risk Five is powering this camera, Risk Five is running in this automobile, Risk Five is here and there, uh, I think we can get a much more emotional uh, uh, reception uh, from people and uh, uh, just kind of generate buzz around the project, which will help us to to deliver really cool things in the future. So I think this is not to be omitted. Uh, and if we're talking about a real world use for, for Risk V, th this real world, world use is really cool because it's actual people making films. I, I don't have time to show you any footage right now, but uh, uh, this is a community of filmmakers who will be taking the camera to various places and shooting films with it. And the footage I've seen so far is really exciting. If, you, if you're seeing a camera that you uh, have been working with actually shooting video, that's kind of awesome. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I can share some, some more uh, thoughts about that later uh, after the presentation, not to take up too much time. Uh, so the status, if you're curious, we're kind of more than halfway through. Um, we have some feedback about Zscale to, to discuss, of course, and uh, our next milestone is a EU technical review in March. And this means that we, by March, we actually have to have the whole thing more or less finished. Not finished per se, but well, it has to work uh, because it, it, it won't be fun to show to the EU officials a, a non-functional camera. Uh, so uh, yeah, looking forward to March and looking forward to having more presentations in the future where I can actually say, yeah, it's already there and working and shooting video. 
And that's all for me in terms of the presentation. I don't know if I have time for questions or not. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Are you going to be ready with that camera to film the workshop in July at MIT? I I, why not? I mean, uh, the thing is that uh, uh, there's one thing to actually have the full camera body and mechanics and everything. The other thing is, as I've shown you the platform before, uh, uh, put, put a lens on this and put the right PGA bitstream in. And, and this is a camera. It's bulky and kind of not very fun to use. But uh, why not? We could try. What kind there, of there frame? Is actually, I didn't have a chance to talk about this, but there is a beta version of the camera. Beta not meaning like a preliminary version of this one, but an actual sister project called, uh, called Axiom Beta that already shoots video. And that's already, so we could even shoot with the beta in case this isn't finished. But I, I'm hoping that, yes, for the next workshop, we bring a full camera. What kind of frame rate can you achieve? Uh, sorry? What frame rate for the camera do you expect to achieve? So actually our aim is to, to do uh, 240 frames per second uh, at maximum. So also slow motion videos are, are meant to be All Right, possible. so 10,000 frames a second is still out of the question. I mean, it's all a matter of limitations. If you're talking about the specific project here, you have to remember we have set out to build something that can be built by anyone else. We mean that uh, uh, anyone in the world, given some technological knowledge and some money, can uh, actually take this and implement this without ask asking people for permission. Uh, in terms of, you know, for example, Xilinx FPGAs, that means the limit for now is uh, Kintec 7. Because if you go to a bigger FPGA, which would allow you to do uh, faster processing, then you have to use uh, the, the licensed tools. And this is a no-go for the project. But that doesn't stop us from doing commercial implementations later that do more. Got a question in the middle here. Hey, Jack. Hey, um, quick question for you. Well, earlier we heard there were plenty of holes in the ISA with vector extensions and um, interrupt architectures and, and power management and um, um, NANDs and CSR. So, so when you're going to develop um, this thing in March, right? How, how do you plug or work around those holes and things which are still yet to be developed? Well, first of all, that's, that's the nice thing about challenging yourself to do something by a given deadline is that you have to do it. Uh, now, many of those issues don't really hit us too hard. It's, uh, someone asked me if it's the entire camera running on, on RISC-V. Uh, as I said, well, no. Uh, we're using, for example, Zinc, which is ARM-based, but so, so the Z-scale for us for now is not like the super critical part and we will get it to work you know, the way we need it to, uh, even if there's any missing parts in, in the spec or in the implementation. Uh, so, so I don't see it as a, as a big problem really. And uh, I think that uh, also meeting so many people here means that I think that any problems we have today are quickly going to be solved because someone will just have to solve them because they have a project running. Could you say something about the software you're using? Are you running bare metal? Or are you using any system software? Or So uh, we actually don't really like to run bare metal in the sense that we're a you know, computer science company. We're a software company. So typically, whatever we do, we, we try to use an operating system, meaning that on the Zinc, we're running Linux. That's the main kind of, uh, but in the Zscale, uh, for now, of course, we're just uh, running bare metal what's available. I know, now I understand the question because I'm thinking about the broad Axiom context. The, broadly speaking, Axiom is mostly Linux-based, but Zscale-wise, yes, for now we're just, uh, you know, we're not trying to do too much at the same time. So actually a very interesting aspect is to try to port uh, different kinds of operating systems onto Zscale. I think, by the way, Zscale plus RTOS could be a very important uh, part of the RISC-V software ecosystem. And we're also interested to explore that, but I don't think we're going to do that in the, in the Axiom context so as not to, you know, uh, risk <laughs> too much. So right now we have bare metal. 